Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 8, part of this playlist called Principal Components Analysis. And let's jump to today's topic, which is correlation of the principal components and the variables, or the, you know, the original variables. Now, reminder for notation, let's let y be a random vector, p by 1 vector, with covariance matrix sigma. And let the eigenvalue slash vectors of sigma be lambda 1, E1, lambda 2, E2, all the way to lambda P, EP, where the eigenvalues are ordered from largest to smallest. We also require that the eigenvectors have a length of 1 and a dot product of 0. It means they have uh, no correlation, 0 covariance. So they're normalized eigenvectors. The principal components are Z1, which is E1 transpose times Y. Z2 is equal to E2 transpose times Y, etc. cetera. Uh, ZI is just the eigenvector times Y. Now the variance of ZI is, is lambda I. And the covariance between any two um, principal components is zero. It means they have zero correlation. And the components of the vector EI are called the uh, principal components loadings or PC loadings. Now here's a theorem, and then we'll illustrate it in R that it does hold. The magnitude of the components of the uh, eigenvectors, you know, EI1, EI2, etc., measures the importance of a variable to the principal components. So in the ith principal component, you know, when you expand it, it looks like this, but we look at the, the coefficients of these, uh, of the variables, and then that tells us which ones are important to that principal component. And now some people will take a principal component and look at the correlation between it and the original variables, but I don't think there's a need to do that because of this theorem that says that EIJ is proportional to the uh, correlation between ZI and YJ. So the and so the correlation between these two two variables is actually proportional to the uh, the the com the loading for that principal component. And so let's let's illustrate. First of all, we're going to illustrate that this formula holds, and then we will use a, a uh, we'll do an example of this. So the data is from an FTP site. It's from this uh, uh, FTP site. The data we're using is t83football.dat. The data were collected by Bryce and Barker from Brigham Young University as part of a preliminary study of possible link between football helmet design and neck injury. Six head measurements were made on each subject. 30 subjects were used in each of three groups, high school football players, college football players, and non-football players. The six variables were, you know, the width of the head, the circumference of the head, the front to back measurement, the eye to the top of the head, the ear to the top of the head, and the jaw width. And we're going to do the principal components of these six variables. So, first of all, we load the data, and since it's, there's no header, we have to give each column the names, and I just give them the variable names. We, I remove the first column because it's not continuous, so you can't do principal components on a, on a categoric variable. And then we look at the, we, we do a principal components analysis, and and we store it in uh, PCA, and then I say return X. That returns the uh, scores. So our data has been run through the roto uh, rotation matrix, or you know the principal components, and then we store that in Z. So Z1 is the first principal component. Z2 is the second, or you know the scores from those. Look at the covariance of Y. And the covariance of Z, and then we store the rotation. So this is the uh, eigenvectors, 
A. So let's look at the correlation between Z and Y. So these are the, uh, you know, the principal components and against the original values, uh, you know, the Y values. And this is it. It creates a matrix a little off the screen, but we'll look at this. Now I want to use, and I'm scrolling back up, um, this formula here. So we're going to we're going to grab the print, the loadings and then t take it times these variances. And that's what this formula does. So I create an empty matrix of NAs and then I just create a for loop over the the I and J from 1 to 6 and here it is. So A is where we stored the eigen vectors, the rotation matrix. And we're taking a, the corresponding value times the you know the square root of the variances, or you could say the you know the ratio of the standard deviations. And then I give it the same dimension names as a correlation matrix, and I'll tell you why in a second. So when we print out theorem, the one we just created, it's actually equal, you know, to just the correlation between the the uh, principal components and the original values. Now, co the correlation matrix, so the correlation of Z and Y, it has values and it's a matrix associated, with, but there's also uh, dimension names, right? There's column names and row names. So if I don't assign those, that the dimension names to this matrix that I just created, this all equal function doesn't like that. So when I now, if we look at the correlation between Z and Y and look at the matrix that we created, everything is true, right? If, if I didn't assign names to theorem, it would say, you know, the attributes are not equal, <laughs> you know? So anyway, I just, I, that's why I gave them the same name. Now, Let's do, oh, I'm scrolling down, dang it. So centering and scaling. Now centering means subtract the mean from each variable. Scaling means divided by the standard deviation. So it forces that sample variance to be one. Now the R function, PR comp, um, by default centers the data. So it, it uses YCI. And the reason is the PR comp uses the singular value decomposition theorem in that. And there's some technicalities that we probably won't get to in this series, but um, maybe in another video that I'll, I'll post the differences. And PRIN comp, which is another function in R that does principal components analysis, it uses the uh, spectral decomposition theorem or the eigenvalue de decomposition to create these. And so anyway, so it's, it's, you know, a little hand wavy, but it's highly recommended that you center your variables in principal components analysis. Now scaling them is a little bit different. Now scaling the variables is recommended if the variables are not measured on the same scale, or at least one of the Y has a much larger variance than the other YIs. And so this is scaling. Well, centering and then scaling is divided by the standard deviation or the square root of the variance. Now, using centered and scaled data is equivalent to the correlation matrix being used in place of the covariance matrix. So the variance of Y, we get the variance covariance matrix sigma. But if we the variance of a centered and scaled variable, we get the correlation matrix rho. I know it looks like a capital P. I don't know how to do a, a capital row in <laughs> LaTeX. Um, but in general, the principal components of sigma are not the same as the principal components of P. So that leads to interpretation issues. So let's do an example here. So we load the same data, the football data. We sign it names and we look at the covariance of our six variables. And I noted this in an earlier video, that if you look at the variance of circumference, it's 3.5. 
And the variance of the other variables, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 2.8, which is sort of big, 0 0.9, 0 0.4. So this is much larger, or it's larger than the others. I don't know much is the right description there. And so this may be a reason that we should use the correlation matrix as opposed to the uh, the variance covariance matrix. And also look at the fourth one, 2.8. And it, in, in an earlier video, we, when we look at the principal components, actually we'll look at them again. These two variables dominate that first principal components as expected, right? They have the highest variance and we're looking for the maximum uh, variance of a linear combination. So those two components should contribute to this. So if we look, we do um, a principal components on the six continuous variables. I put scale equal fault. It's the default setting, but to illustrate that we're only using centered data, not centered and scaled. Store it in PCA. We look at the, sta the standard deviations of the uh, principal components, and then it prints out the principal components. And if we look at PC1, the second variable circumference and the fourth, which is the measurement from eye to the top of the head, are the most prominent. They dominate this principal component. And so those two contribute to the most variance of that linear combination. And even the second principal component, the highest one is eye to head, uh, measure eight eye to the top of the head measurement it it, it dominates the second principal components oh and the second most is circumference so those two variables alone contribute to the first two principal components and so that is you know a reason that we might look at the using the correlation matrix so the cumulative proportion we've looked at this before the first two are 85 percent of the total variance now let's look at scaling our data matrix, which means it now it's equivalent to using the correlation matrix. And if we print out the things, we get the standard deviations associated with each principal component. Now I'm only showing some, I guess it's one of them is left off. Uh, here's the rotation matrix or the loadings or the principal components. And now if we look at the first principal component, now circumference contributes the most to this principal component, but it, it doesn't dominate it like the previous. And then it's uh, the front, the back measurement of your head is the second component. And then, and then the third is jaw. But look at the, the second principal components. Those three variables are, are downweighted in the second principal component. You know, the other three variables are upweighted. The width of the head, the, um, the eye to the top of the head, and the ear to the top of the head. So it's like different information in, in each principal component. And then the third is the front, uh, front to back measurement dominates it. Now the importance of the variables you know, the, uh, the principal components, the cumulative total, you have to go to all three before you get to 82%. And then the fourth one, all, you know, the first four contribute to 92% of the day. That's a lot, you, typically, then it's 97. But I always, before you do that, you should look at the scree plot and because I think that uh, tells a lot of information or helps with what variables should be kept. So here's the scree plot using the correlation matrix. We've looked at the scree plot using the variance covariance matrix. Now notice it took three to get over 80%. And you can see that these are sort of vertical, more vertical drops. And then these start to be more horizontal. They're, you know, still got a significant downslope. But Clearly, the first three should be used, even though this third one is below the average variance. I think it should be in there. Uh, the fourth one, probably not, but you know, if you could make a cogent argument to include it too. Okay, so notes, final notes, and then we're done. When the covariance matrix is used to derive the principal components, you know, the circumference and the eye to the top of the head measurement have the highest magnitudes in the first principal. Components. And that's because their original variances are so much larger than the other variances. Now, when the correlation matrix is used to derive the principal components, the circumference 
and uh, front to back measurement at eye level have the highest magnitudes in the first principal components. The point is that interpretation is really not clear. Like when you go from using the covariance matrix to using the, the correlation matrix, you know, you get different interpretations. And so it's really not a clear cut argument. The argument is what are the original variances? Are they lopsided? Are they similar? And I really suggest using the covariance matrix unless there's a large difference in the variances. Um, then use the correlation matrix. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. I ran a little over. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.